Hey guys, welcome back to RPO Restorations. In today's video, we're gonna be continuing work on the 93 Blazer that I'm currently reviving. And we're gonna be doing that by putting in some work on the transfer case, which is a new process 241C. Uh, we're gonna be correcting a common problem with these and that involves a uh, failure of some of the seals, which in turn causes it to suck fluid out of the transmission filling it up to the brim with transmission fluid. So if that sounds like something you'd like to learn a little bit more about, or maybe you're having that problem yourself, stay tuned, we'll jump in and get started. All right, so a little while ago, I made a community post about being weary uh, when you purchase a vehicle that's had a lot of hands under the hood, uh, because you never know what may or may not have been done to the components of the car or truck. Well, I was referencing the transfer case in the 93 Blazer because I finally went to check the fluid in it, and when I cracked the fill plug, the case was so full of fluid that as soon as I cracked it, fluid was gushing out. Uh, it was filled all the way to the top, um, and I just thought that was crazy. Well, turns out I was wrong. I can't admit when I'm wrong. Uh, evidently, it's a common problem with these that when the uh, input shaft seal fails, uh, because this transfer case has an internal pump, it will begin to suck fluid out of the transmission. So today we're going to be correcting that by uh, replacing our input shaft seal while we have it out of the truck. I'm also going to replace the front output shaft seal. Um, the rear output shaft seal is a fairly easy fix and I've already taken care of that. But uh, before you get started, you obviously, to do this job, you have to remove the transfer case from the truck. It's actually a lot easier than I thought. Uh, you simply remove these four bolts, uh, and the two uh, bolts on the yoke, the front drive shaft, compress that and remove it. Remove the rear drive shaft, which is fairly straightforward. Remove the electric connectors to the transfer case. There's one up top and one in the back. Uh, remove the linkage, which is a nut right here that's reverse threaded, so be careful. You have to turn it the opposite way to remove it. And then remove one, two, three, four, five, the six bolts that actually hold the transmission case to the tail shaft extender of the transmission. Uh, before you remove these, you want to support it with a jack, preferably somewhere on this end. Uh, and then you could simply lower it a bit, twist it out, or rotate it so it clears the cross member on the frame, and then lower it out of the way. It actually wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. But now that we've got it out of the truck, I've cleaned it up a little bit, we're going to go ahead and get started uh, replacing this input shaft seal. Okay, so you can see the seal uh, runs right here on the outside right on top of the shaft. This one looks to be original, so we're gonna go ahead and just work on prying this out uh, with a screwdriver. I'm not even gonna use a chisel yet, uh, and a hammer. See if we can't work this guy out of here a little bit. Yeah, this one was really brittle. You can see how it just kind of disintegrated uh, as soon as I got behind it. Um, I can feel, you can, you can actually hear the rubber just cracking and popping off. So this one was in really bad shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and spend a little time working this out uh, and then we'll move on to step two. So it took a lot of work because this seal was absolutely hard as a rock. There was absolutely nothing that I would even call close to rubber left on it. I uh, basically had to take a chisel and just work it down and work it out until I could bend it and get it out of there. This thing was absolutely hard as a rock. So now that I have this out, I'm going to make sure the mating surface is nice and smooth and then we're going to replace it with a new one. All right, we'll just take our finger, make sure everything's smooth, there's no burrs, anything that needs to be ground off, we're good. We have our new seal right here, as you can, I don't know if you could tell, but the input shaft seal is actually two-sided. There's a lip 
on the outside to keep the transmission fluid out. There's a lip on the inside to keep the transfer case fluid in. So make sure you have two lips on your new seal. All right, so I took a little bit of transmission fluid and put it on the shaft and around the inside. I also put some around the outside of the seal. Uh, the seal came with a little bit of grease on the inside that I could just spread around. Now this seal's very tight and it fits over the shaft snugly, so you want to make sure it's lubricated so you don't damage those lips as you're working it down. And we'll just get it seated in there a little bit, and then now that we got the seal on there, we're just going to take a hammer and give it some light taps and just kind of work our way around until we can get it seated all the way in there. All right, we got our new seal in. It's nice and flush with the mating surface. It's uh, in all the way around. There's no high spots. So we are good to go. Hopefully now our transmission fluid and our transfer case fluid will no longer mix. So now that we have the input shaft seal done, I figure since the transfer case is out of the truck, it also would be a good time to do this front output shaft seal since it's a little bit easier and we have more access to it. So we're going to go ahead and remove this nut in here and take this yoke off. There's a one and one eighth socket on this impact driver. Let's go ahead and start working this out. And there is no need to mark this or anything. It's not balanced. You just got to uh, take a hammer and work it off. There we go. Now that we got our yoke off, uh, we can see our seal sits flush up against this case. It's real tight. So what we're going to have to do is take a chisel and a hammer and just slowly work the edge out around until we can bend it and rip it out of there. There we go. Right, we got our old seal out. Now we'll clean up this surface again, get it ready for the new one. All right, we have our new seal here, it looks like it's a newer design. It has uh, the lip with the spring, which looks like it belongs on the back end. And then we have just like kind of a rubber boot, which I'm guessing goes on the front end. So if it doesn't work, we'll know why. All right, and we got a little ATF fluid all around just to help out with getting this thing back in here. And same deal as before. We're just going to slowly tap it in, tap around the edges, whoops, and work it in. All right, so we got it in. Our seal feels nice and flush all the way around. So we are good to go with that. Now what we got to do is put that yoke back on and wrap this job up. washer and the mounting nut. This gets torqued down to 110 foot-pounds. And good to go. All right guys, thank you for tuning in. Uh, if you haven't already liked the video or hit that subscribe button, you might want to think about doing that now. I hope you were able to learn a little something about your new process 241C transfer case and how to fix one of these pesky problems uh, that I'm sure have driven a couple of you guys crazy. So thank you for tuning into the video. I'll see you on the next one.